In this follow-up video, we take a deep dive into the hidden messages and meanings of the costumes in Game of Thrones coming up. Welcome back to Costume Co. I do almost weekly videos analyzing movies and TV shows from a costume perspective. Today, I'm putting on my tinfoil hat and diving deep into some fan theories, viewer observations, and some of my own analysis that I've made over the last seven seasons of the HBO series Game of Thrones. In case you missed the first costume symbolism video, I'll leave that for you in the description below. So without further ado, let's get right into some of these hidden symbols and messages. Warning, there are some major spoilers from all seven seasons of Game of Thrones. Tyrell Rose The sigil of House Tyrell is a golden rose on a green field. The Tyrell Rose in the sigil is actually a sink foil or potentilla. Derived from Old English and Latin, sink foil means five-leafed. Like the Tyrell sigil, yellow is the most common color of sink foil, but the flower might also be white, pinkish, or red. And the word potence, meaning strength, is derived from the name potentilla, which matches up very nicely with the Tyrell motto, growing strong. Since season two, the Tyrell sigil has been incorporated into a variety of costumes and jewelry pieces. From Marjorie's jewelry pieces, rose and thorn crown, and fabric roses on the train of her wedding gown, to the rose brocade fabrics that make up Olena's wardrobe and her beautifully embroidered wimples, and then all the way to Loris' elaborately decorated jousting armor, this motif shows House Tyrell's loyalty until the bitter end. The five-petaled sink foil has a long history in heraldry, with the emblem signifying strength, power, honor, and loyalty. A famous example is the Tudor Rose, the traditional emblem of England that took its name and origins from the House of Tudor. The Tudors rose to power in the wake of the Wars of the Roses and the sink foil emblem seen on the far right is a combination of the united House of York and House of Lancaster. The sink foil symbol itself dates back to Roman times, where it was called the Rose of Venus. Depiction of the five-petaled flower appears in architecture as early as 1033. It's often incorporated in Christian design and architecture of the Middle Ages and some historians have speculated that the rose in Gothic architecture is a secret symbol of the feminine principle, one of a multitude of hermetic symbols found in these churches. So this again lines up with House Tyrell, as Game of Thrones showrunners have stated that the current generation of Tyrells is a closet matriarchy. Night King's Sigil one of the most questioned embellishments in the Game of Thrones series is this little metal detail on the Night King's breastplate. You'll see slight variations of it in other White Walkers as well. When I first saw it, I thought it looked like a typical needle threader that you might find in a sewing kit. And YouTuber The Last Harpy stated in one of his videos that the symbol looks like the face of the three-eyed raven. The shape certainly lines up with the head and beak. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Chevron Symbol Coming back to the Night King, the construction of his breastplate is made of a series of chevrons. In heraldry, the chevron is an inverted V that represents the roof of a house, derived from the French word chevron meaning rafter. Among the Celts, the shape acted as the mark of a warrior or hunter or someone in the community who was a builder. I got this from Vet Dude on Reddit, so take it with a grain of salt, but he says that the chevron came to be used in various forms as an emblem of rank for knights and men-at-arms in feudal days. One legend is that the chevron was awarded to a knight to show he had taken part in capturing a castle, town, or other building of which the chevron resembled the roofs. 
It is believed from this resulted its use as an insignia of grade by the military. The chevron is also the same shape as the Greek lambda, which was first adopted in 420 BC and quickly became a widely known Spartan symbol as seen on their shields. Both the Night King and Tyrion, starting in Season 7, have chevrons incorporated into their clothing, although Tyrion's is an inverted chevron or a V. So there's some thought that the inverted chevron looks like goat horns and that it is no coincidence that chevron sounds like chevre, the French name for goat. And another possible symbolism of the inverted chevron indicates a horseshoe in its proper position so the luck doesn't fall out. In Dan Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code, the chevron is masculine. It represents men's parts, while the inverted chevron, or V, represents lady parts. This has been largely debunked, however, as fiction. If you really want to read something into this, I suppose you could glean that the Night King is a warrior in a path of ultimate destruction, while Tyrion is more diplomatic in his determination to achieve Danny's goals through negotiation, even though his tactics often backfire. Zigzag symbol. In season seven, Danny begins wearing these Targaryen style coats with a zigzag herringbone motif, beginning in the Spoils of War and then again in Eastwatch. So there was some suggestion that that played tribute to John's direwolf sigil, but so far I've found no evidence to support that. If we zoom in close, we can really see on the fabric in greater detail with the motif clearly visible. But it's Danny's white winter coat that she wears in the episode Beyond the Wall, where the pattern on the upper sleeves is the most pronounced. The zigzag is depicted in ancient symbolism such as hieroglyphs. So for instance, in hieroglyphs, the letter N means water, as seen on the left, and the astrological symbol of Aquarius, the water bearer, is also represented by two rows of zigzags. So now, of course, with Danny being a Targaryen, she is a dragon, which in Chinese astrology is a fire sign. So perhaps we need to look to another meaning. So the zigzag is also a series of chevrons and inverted chevrons, as I've mentioned earlier, symbols that might represent the masculine and the feminine or warrior and negotiator. So perhaps Danny's zigzag is a combination of the two, making her both warrior and and negotiator. And I thought I'd show you that in this season eight release image, the zigzag pattern is now gone from her upper sleeves. And just to really mess with our heads, here's Tyrion uh, from season eight, wearing a surcoat with the herringbone zigzag motif. So let me know what your thoughts are on either the chevron or the zigzag pattern and what you think they might mean in the comment section below. Euroboros or Ouroboros symbol. In season seven, you would have had to have looked very closely to see these silver brooches on both Grey Worm and Missande, which I presumed were gifts from Danny. If we zoom in closely, we can see that they are actually circular brooches of three dragons eating their own tails. This symbol is known as the Euroboros or Ouroboros, as I mentioned earlier, which literally means tail devourer in Greek. It is one of the oldest mystical symbols in the world dating back to the Egyptians. Euroboros is the symbolism of the serpent biting, devouring, or eating its own tail. A snake is often a symbol of resurrection as it appears to be continually reborn as it sheds its skin. This symbolizes the cyclical nature of the universe, creation out of destruction, life out of death. The oldest known Euroboros appeared on a golden shrine in the tomb of Tutankhamun, King Tut, in Egypt in the 13th century BC. According to leading Egyptologist Jan Asman, the symbol refers to the mystery of cyclical time which flows back into itself. The Euroboros, in its original Egyptian context, symbolized repetition, renewal, and the eternal cycle of time. Interestingly, the serpent is sometimes a dragon like we see in this engraving by Lucas Genis from 1625. And in alchemy, the figure serves as a symbol for Mercury. 
The sigil of House Reed of Greywater Watch depicts a lizard lion sigil closely resembling the Euroboros. And then on the right, Howland Reed's collar is fastened with a buckle in the same shape as his family's sigil. And I mentioned this in the last video that the Targaryen sigil is a seven armed spiral symbol, but it is also a three headed dragon Euroboros eating multiple tails. And finally, a Redditor pointed out that the brooches look very much like the logo for the Ender Scrolls Online, which is a series of action role-playing open-world fantasy video games. The logo is designed by Matt Weathers, lead artist for the game, and it's meant to represent the three alliances in conflict theme with an eagle, a lion, and a dragon eating its own tail. Sansa's Second Wedding so Sansa's second wedding to Ramsay Bolton is mired in like a hotbed of controversy. And while I don't want to get into that too much, there are two slightly more nuanced observations that I want to bring to your attention. The first is Sansa's wedding gown itself. You know, yes, it's beautiful, but as Michelle Clapton has said, it's Sansa trying to respect everyone that's been before her. She's finally feeling like she can make Winterfell a family home again, so I wanted to incorporate pieces that represented her family. The silhouette itself is in keeping with the statue of Lyanna Stark in the crypts of Winterfell, and the white fur capelette are a nod to her Stark family, while the undergown and the trout brooches are a tribute to her mother, Catelyn. The wedding gown she wore in her marriage to Tyrion was actually commissioned by Cersei. So for me, the most striking thing about Sansa's gown is that she made it for herself, but it is inherently bad luck to make your own wedding dress. A wedding is filled with a host of traditions. And one according to wedding myth is that every stitch the bride sews, she will shed one tear during her marriage. So that would be like, for Sansa, thousands of tears. Viewer Tatiana Melendez brought this second ominous observation to my attention. For Sansa's wedding, Theon is outfitted in a repurposed version of Rob Stark's red wedding costume. This is Rob's original costume pictured before the Red Wedding Massacre. It's a simple yet elegant black tunic with contrasting brocade sleeves and a cape that features the same brocade in a sort of claw shape. And the Silver Stark Direwolf cape closures are the standout feature. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison so that you can see that while the tunic is the same, Theon's cape is made in the northern way, gathered on the shoulders and held into position with two crisscross leather straps. Actor Sophie Turner confirmed the Easter egg, stating, If anyone noticed it was Rob Stark's costume, just FYI to make it a little bit more brutal. But that begs the question then, how did the Boltons manage to get the costume off of Rob's beheaded dead body after parading him around, send him back to Winterfell and restore it to almost new condition? Oh, and find matching fabric to make a new cape. Perhaps we'll never know the answer to that question. Square and Rectangle Symbols in my last video, I emphasized the importance of shapes as symbols. So we had the hexagon, the spiral, and phi or phi symbol. And while at first glance, they may appear inconsequential, squares and rectangles do hold some meaning too. Squares are seen as particularly stable and orderly, like the house of black and white, standing for firm foundations, both literally and metaphorically. There are basic reasons why most building footprints are squares or rectangles. They are stable and encourage permanent structures. We first see rectangles on Ned's quilted gambeson in season one. These shapes represent stability and suggest honesty. Like the Starks, squares can make people feel that they have a strong foundation in their life. In Japanese and Chinese cultures, the square represents the earth of being grounded. And in Christian symbolism, a square represents concepts related to the number four, such as the four corners of the earth. 
Meanwhile, in classical astrology, a major heart aspect such as the square might offer a choice point where an important decision needs to be made that involves an opportunity cost. So in Ned's case, this could have been his decision to become the hand of the king, perhaps against his better judgment. And while the circle could represent traits of the female, like we see with Sansa's pendant, the square could symbolize the traits of the male. So this brings me to Aria. As I mentioned before, and as other viewers have noticed, Aria's square pattern on her jacket is reminiscent of her father Ned Stark's costume. But the motif continues to spread when she adds this woven cloak featuring the square pattern. Here's a close-up of the cape so you can see. YouTube viewer Althea pointed out to me that Arya's square motif featured on her cloak is reflective of the House of Black and White, the temple in Bravos dedicated to the many-faced god. You can see on the doors behind her the square pattern that looks very similar to the one on her cape. And then viewer Lovey Dovey also mentioned that the pattern looks like the squares that hold the faces in the Hall of Faces. And this motif is repeated once again in Arya's bedroom in Winterfell. In masonry, the square is a symbol for regulating life and correcting character weaknesses in search of inner harmony, representing a person that is master of his or her own thoughts, actions, and emotions. According to this belief system, we master our mind, we live in peace, and thrive on the physical plane. So by the end of Season 7, Arya is completely covered with this motif. Even the leather skirts have the same grid-like pattern. So does this mean that now that Arya has taken out Littlefinger, that she is master of her own thoughts, actions, and emotions? I'd like to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section down below. As you likely know, the 8th and final season of Game of Thrones is out April 14th, so I'll be producing lots more Game of Thrones content, including the Game of Thrones Top 20 Best Men's Costumes coming soon. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of my 2019 comment. I'll see you in the next video.